Morning, good Thursday evening to you. Hope you and yours had a, a pretty good day today. We had a pretty decent day weather-wise. I'm coming down with a cold. You might be able to see the red around my nose. I, I did a COVID test this morning. It's not that. It's just a good old-fashioned cold, and it's quite a quite a doozy. Uh, so hoping to be on the mend by uh, the time the weekend rolls around. It'll be a good start to the weekend to just stay inside, maybe have some chicken noodle soup because we've got cold and snow coming our way. We'll talk all about that in this video. In the meantime, uh, today a mix of sun and clouds. You know, we're in, the, we're in a time of year that clouds typically, cloudy hours typically outnumber sunny hours, and that's been the case over the last couple of weeks. We've had our occasional pretty nice day, of course. Um, but for the most part, until we get into April and May, in Northeast Ohio, Northwest PA, our proximity to the Great Lakes means that uh, it's hard to get a completely sunny day more than maybe once every couple of weeks at this time of the year in our region. But a year ago today, boy, we had a, a, a real nice one, 69 degrees on this date last year. This tied the record high set on March the uh, 10th. And so uh, nothing like that today. We were about 20 degrees plus cooler than that today. That uh, high temperature last year tied the record set in 1973. The record low on today's date is a little more recent, 1996 at 1 above. But uh, 47 and 26 today, overall just a very typical early March day. Time-lapse video from Niles. This morning we had a little river fog around parts of the region this morning, especially along the Ohio River down towards East Liverpool, but otherwise a mix of sun and clouds uh, for the balance of the day today. Clouds will thicken up as we go through the night tonight. Now our upcoming winter storm doesn't look like much early this evening across the lower 48 states. Moisture starting to gather out here, but until this low pressure system starts swinging east and picking up some gulf moisture, the uh, radar is going to look pretty unimpressive uh, in the short term. But in anticipation of our system, uh, you can definitely check out where the storm is likely to form right along this temperature gradient. What a doozy of a temperature gradient we have out there in the middle of the country this evening. It's 67 in Dallas, but 37 in Oklahoma City, and 43 in Tulsa, 61 in Little Rock. Denver dropped below zero this morning, setting a record low for the date out there. And elsewhere across the country this evening, of course, the Weather Service has been busy issuing some winter products for parts of our region. Now, lots of winter weather advisories are off to our South and west, closer to home, the Pittsburgh National Weather Service office did hoist winter storm watches for a good chunk of their counties. Notice nothing out of the Cleveland office just yet. That'll change tonight into tomorrow morning. I, I would expect a tier of winter weather advisories to be issued for a lot of their eastern Ohio counties, including uh, Trumbull and Mahoning. Pittsburgh will probably off, uh, hoist winter weather advisories for Mercer and Lawrence and Columbiana and Carroll and down towards Tuscarawas and uh, Harrison County as well. Uh, criteria for between a winter weather advisory and a potential winter storm warning, we're kind of right on the edge of that. But don't pay too close attention to these uh, products, the, the you know splitting hairs between these products. Pay attention to the impacts and the actual forecasted amounts. That is what is most important for us. Uh, what is not as important, whether you're under a winter weather advisory or a winter storm warning, a winter storm watch, or whatever. In the meantime, in the daylight hours on Friday, clouds will increase. Now, by late in the afternoon, early in the evening, we may get grazed by a quick rain or a snow shower, but then everything just becomes snow as we go through the overnight. Let me rewind this a little bit. There's our steady snow through the overnight hours. It's just going to snow all night, but there's been a little bit of an eastward and a faster trend with the steady snow on the modeling today, so I think the steadiest of the snow is out of here pretty early Saturday, maybe even by daybreak or sunrise Saturday morning. Even though the steady snow pushes to the east, it's going to be windy, it's going to be cold all day. Flurries, a couple of lake-impacted or lake-enhanced snow showers will be a possibility on Saturday, maybe giving some bonus accumulations to a few spots. And then a weak little system on Sunday might bring us a couple of flurries and snow showers around midday. A gusty breeze on Sunday, it's not a warm day Sunday, but it will be less harsh on Sunday than it will be on Saturday. In the meantime, uh, snowfall expectations have come down a little bit. And I mean, just a little. It's just kind of a subtle thing. Here's a look at our computer model spread. Everything's kind of bunched right around that four inch mark. Some models a little higher, closer to five. Some a little lower, closer to three. Uh, all in all, the faster speed, the somewhat eastern, more eastern track of this storm means that the snowfall expectations have come down a little bit for some. The adjustment I made to our snowfall map today I, I cut out an area in our kind of western viewing area where we're gonna, probably going to have our time seeing more than uh, four inches. So think places such as Berlin Center, Beloit, Sebring, 
out towards uh, uh, New Garden, heading over towards uh, Southington, Newton Falls, perhaps even to, to Warren and, and Lordstown. The farther east you are, closer to the PA line and over into Mercer and Lawrence counties, the better chance you have of seeing four or five inches. I think six is really at the top end of the range of possibilities. I think a lot of us in that purple zone that is shown here are going to end up around four, four and a half or five inches. No matter how much snow you get, though, it's going to be cold and blustery everywhere. Saturday's wind chills, mostly single digits. Again, you factor in or you consider that it was 73 degrees on Sunday. In a six-day span, there's going to be like a 60-plus uh, degree difference in how it feels outside after that kind of May-like day on Sunday. If you have travel plans, the worst uh, travel conditions are probably roughly from, say, 11 p.m. or midnight through about 6 or 7 a.m. on Saturday. Once we get past that point, flurries will linger, uh, and certainly there will be some slick surfaces, but the snow intensity will be quite a bit less as we transition into mid-morning on Saturday. By the afternoon, some flurries, a couple of snow showers may be around, and so we might have changeable conditions here and there Saturday afternoon, but it won't be as consistently snowy everywhere Saturday afternoon as compared to early in the day. I'm not expecting travel difficulties on Sunday with a couple of flurries here and there. That should not be much of a big deal. All right, we have the time change this weekend as daylight saving time returns. Two o'clock becomes three o'clock Sunday morning. And the sunset Sunday evening will be at 7.27 p.m. Sunrise, 7.37. Uh, that uh, kind of a darker start to the day on Sunday. Those dark mornings aren't going to last long since we're picking up daylight so fast at this time of the year. 21 WFMJ, proud sponsor of the Mahoning Valley St. Patrick's Day Parade in Boardman on Sunday. 1 p.m. is when that starts. Yeah, bundle up. It's going to be chilly. Not as harsh as Saturday, but chilly with temperatures mid-30s, wind chills probably in the 20s, and a couple of flurries and snow showers. Will be around. Is this the last hurrah for this kind of cold? Cold of the kind of intensity that we'll see Saturday? Yeah, probably. It's probably the last hurrah for that. We always have pretty chilly days at times in April and even into early May. But a day in the 20s with wind chills in the single digits, that becomes much less likely the deeper into the season we get. So it's a nice rebound next week. And by St. Patrick's Day on Thursday, we are expecting highs back in the mid-60s. So lots of things to look forward to next week. And whatever amount of snow your community gets Friday night into Saturday morning, it's all going to be melted by the middle of next week. Thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. I, uh, I'm going to go uh, put some Vicks on my, on my nose and hope this uh, cold is a quick hitter. In the meantime, I will uh, see you back here on Friday.